Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to explore a devastating case of domestic violence that shook the community of St. Louis County, Missouri on March 5th, 2021. Roseanne McCulley, a 34-year-old mother of three, was brutally murdered by her estranged husband Bobby McCulley along with her 13-year-old son Caden and six-year-old daughter Kaylee. In this video, we'll delve into the events leading up to the tragedy, the investigation, and the aftermath. Please like and subscribe to our channel as we bring you real life stories every week. Roseanne and Bobby McCulley had been married since 2018, but their relationship was marked by domestic violence even before they got married. In February, 2021, Roseanne posted on Facebook about being hospitalized after an altercation with her husband, stating that he had beaten her and left her with severe bruising and swelling. Just days later, Roseanne filed for divorce. On the evening of March 5th, 2021, Bobby showed up at Roseanne's home armed with a gun. He shot and killed Roseanne, Caden, and Kaylee. He then abducted his one-year-old daughter. Police were called. They launched an investigation and issued an Amber Alert to find the abducted child. They then found out Bobby dropped the baby off at a relative's house. Police then tracked down Bobby, but he took his own life before being captured. Roseanne's friends and family were left reeling from the tragedy. Her friend Stephanie St. John described Roseanne as a very sweet girl and very intelligent. She said Roseanne had been increasingly concerned for her safety in the weeks leading up to the murder. The murder of Roseanne and her children serves as a heartbreaking reminder of the devastating consequences of domestic violence. We must continue to raise awareness about this critical issue and support those affected by it. Rest in peace, Roseanne, Caden, and Kaylee. Stay tuned for commentary by DJ. Hey everyone, DJ here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Roseanne McCulley. She was a 34 year old mother. She was killed by her husband, Bobby, along with her two kids in a tragic case of domestic violence. Now, Roseanne was a mother of three, an entrepreneur, and just someone who's just trying to live her life and survive in this world. And she met Bobby back in around 2017, and immediately after she met him, there was allegations of domestic violence. In 2017, Roseanne files a domestic violence complaint against Bobby, but then drops the charges. In 2018, Roseanne and Bobby would go on to get married. And right after they got married, the abuse continued. So let me tell you a little bit about Bobby McCulley. Bobby McCulley had a long history of domestic violence, long before he even met Roseanne. In 2010, Bobby admits to false imprisonment and receives probation and an ankle monitor, but no jail time. In 2016, a woman filed a protective order against Bobby for pointing a gun at her and her child. Another woman documented threats from Bobby and his girlfriend who was sent to intimidate her and her mother. Once Bobby meets Roseanne around 2017, he continues to be abusive before their marriage and during their marriage. And while they were going through that divorce, that's when he proceeded to kill her and her two kids. In February of 2021, Roseanne kicks Bobby out of the house and proceeds to initiate divorce proceedings. And on March 5th, 2021, Bobby breaks into the house, kills Roseanne and her two kids, and then abducts their one-year-old daughter. Police finally caught up with Bobby and he ended up killing himself instead of facing the law. So Roseanne's first mistake is getting with a man who already had a documented history of being abusive to women. If Roseanne had done a background check, she would have seen that Bobby was not a good man. But she gets with him and immediately starts abusing her. And she should have immediately left him, but she stayed. She not only stayed, she married him. So he was abusing her basically from the time they met until the time she met her demise. So let me tell you this. If you're a woman and you're listening to this podcast, if a man should ever put his hands on you, forget about putting his hands on you. If a man should ever threaten you with bodily harm, you should run. Do not stay with a man who's threatening your life or threatening to beat you up. Any man that could put his hands on you is a man that can kill you. If the words even leave his lips to say he's gonna abuse you, that's someone you don't wanna be with. Men should be cherishing women and protecting them. They shouldn't be abusing them and treating them like they're property. Bobby obviously wasn't brought up properly. Bobby went through his life as an adult abusing women. I have no idea why he has that mentality, but just like a lot of men like him, they have this mentality that they can just hit a woman, abuse them, and the woman should stay with them. Imagine this. 
They want to be able to slap a woman around, punch her, kick her, do anything to her, and she should stay around and just accept the abuse and be loving to them and bear their kids. This just doesn't make any sense. That's why you need to do a background check on any man that you're planning to date. And let me tell you this, it's not easy to leave a man once he starts abusing you because that man is gonna try to gaslight you. He's gonna lie to the cops and say he didn't do it. He's gonna do everything to keep you in that torment. You need a village to help you get away from that man. A lot of women, they, they don't wanna lose their job. They gotta to go to work and then your kids are in school. How are you gonna just take them out of school and disappear? It's practically almost impossible. So in order for you to get away from an abuser, you have to have the resources, which most people don't have. But Roseanne should have never gotten into a relationship with Bobby. And once she realized he was an abuser, she should have left. Because the longer you stay with that man, it's the harder it's gonna be able to leave. He's not gonna let you go easily. These guys, they think they own you. They don't wanna see you by yourself. They don't wanna see you with another man. And they're gonna kill you. And that's exactly what's been happening. The cycle of domestic violence is gonna continue until you're dead. And that's exactly what happened in this case. Now let's talk about the cop's response. Cause Rosie, even though before she got married, she did file a, a report with the police and she did drop the charges. But after the marriage, a couple of months before she was murdered, she did call the cops a number of times. And the cops definitely did not do enough. And let me tell you this, do not depend on the cops to save you. Yes, we do need the cops for many situations, but in a case of domestic violence, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to document what's happening. If you have a, a recorder, whether it's an audio recorder or video, document it and you need to disappear. Once you disappear, then you can file a police report and show the evidence. Because let me tell you what happens typically. Someone hits you, you go to the police, the police arrest the man. And what happens is the judge releases the man on bail. While he's on bail, a lot of women got killed while the man is on bail. The law is not set up to protect women in cases of domestic abuse. So the law needs to change because as it stands, you cannot depend on the police to save you from domestic violence. And I think that's a big misconception. A lot of women think the cops are gonna be there to save them. The cops are not gonna save you. The cops are gonna come after you die, investigate, arrest the person, and then they're gonna put them in jail. And in a lot of instances, those men don't even serve a whole life term in prison. They can come out in the next 40 years or 25 years and do the same thing again while you're dead. And the only way to save yourself is to disappear. And the only way to disappear is if you have the resources to do so, meaning if you have the money and support. And let's keep it real. Most of us today don't have disposable money just hanging around there. We don't have $40,000, $50,000 to just, to just disappear. And if you're going to a shelter, you're gonna to have to stay there. You're gonna to have to quit your job, take your kids out of school, switch them to another school. Your whole life is gonna be turned upside down because you chose the wrong man to be in a romantic relationship with. That's why it's so important to pick the right man or at least pick somebody who don't have a history of domestic violence or any type of violence. Now, Roseanne went to social media and was posting her business on social media about her husband abusing her. And he responded, saying that he's gonna do it again. That alone shows you that this guy did not care about nothing. And that means he's a very dangerous person. Anyone who don't care about nothing, they ain't got nothing to lose, can kill you in a second and could kill themselves too because they don't care about life anymore. And that's exactly what happened. So you gotta see the signs of someone who do not care about their life anymore. And that's someone you wanna stay far away from. Roseanne was abused to the point where she had to go to the hospital. This guy was punching her, stomping on her, beating her like she's a man. I don't understand how a man feels like a man while beating up a woman. I have a couple of questions here. It says, could earlier intervention or proactive approach by law enforcement prevent this tragedy? And I would say, absolutely not. The only thing that could have prevented this tragedy from law enforcement perspective is if they would change the laws. If someone was to threaten someone, they should get them at least two and a half years in jail. And if someone was to put their hands on someone, meaning hit them, they should give them a minimum five years in jail. And once you get caught abusing someone, whether it's verbally or physically, there should be no 
bail and no parole. Next question is, how can support systems for domestic violence victims be improved to prevent future tragedies? Well, the support system that we have is the domestic violence hotline and we have um, shelters. And the only way for shelters to really help women is if the shelters become like the witness protection program. See, the witness protection program, they take you and your immediate family and they give you a brand new life, new names and everything. Now, if the shelters had a system like that, now that would protect women. But as it is, just having a shelter where women can go and stay for a period of time, but yet still they would, they would have to quit their jobs. They wouldn't be able to pay any bills. Um, they could possibly lose their home. Their kids are going to have to be taken out of school. Nobody can afford that. So the shelter system is not adequate. Now, the domestic violence hotline is a good thing, but I can only do so much. Let's talk about another question. The last question is, what role can social media play in raising awareness and facilitating intervention in domestic abuse cases? Social media makes everything worse. If you're gonna go on social media and talk about being abused, most people on there are just laughing at you. They're not gonna help you. It's just a waste of time. I never hear social media helping anyone. What we need is a change in the mindset in society in general that says that a man is the head of the household because that gives men thinking they can control the women or I'm the head, you gotta listen to me. And that turns into abuse because the man thinks that the woman needs to do every single thing that he says. And if she doesn't do it exactly the way he wants, now that's a recipe for verbal abuse and physical abuse. So we need to change the culture, the mindset of women and men. Because some women buy into that nonsense of, oh, my man has to lead and all of a sudden, no, your man don't have to lead nothing. Both of you are in a relationship and you both can have an opinion equally. You shouldn't be subservient to a man and he shouldn't be subservient to you either. It should be an equal partnership. Nobody should be bowing down to anybody or, or putting somebody on a pedestal. Or, you know, this, this is not how things should be. That's one of the root problems of why domestic violence continues to happen. It's that mentality of the man is the head. Listen to your husband. If your husband is like Bobby McCauley, that's not someone you want to lead you. That's not someone you want to be in a relationship. That's not someone you want to marry. And that's not someone you should be having kids with. So Bobby broke into the house on March 5th, 2021. He killed Roseanne. He killed her 13 year old son and he killed her six year old daughter. And then he abducted his own toddler and went on the run. And the cops, they called his mother to ask her if she knew where he was. And she said she didn't know where he was. When the cops finally caught up to him, he was right near his mother's house. So the mother was lying to the cops, even though she knew he just killed his wife and two kids. Why do mothers support their children even when they're doing wrong? A lot of mothers are the best thing that's ever happened to this world. My mother is, is one, she's an amazing woman. But if I should do something wrong, I don't want my mother defending me. I want my mother to tell me you were wrong and you have to face the consequences of your actions. That's what I want my mother to do. And that's what every mother in this world should be doing. Hold your kids accountable when they do things that's wrong. Still support them. After they go in jail, you can visit them, but don't let them think that you can go through this world and abuse people and get away with it. Because if you're a role model to them and you're protecting them while they're doing wrong, you're actually telling them it's okay to be a bad person. It's okay to murder people. It's okay to rape people. It's okay to do bad things. That's what you're doing. And what you're doing is creating a, a world that's worse than it was yesterday. You add into the statistics. We as humans should be doing everything we can to make this world a better place. We shouldn't be doing anything to make it worse. And Bobby McCauley's mother, she definitely was not doing anything to help this world because she had a murderer running around after he killed his wife and two kids and he could have killed more people. But she refused to tell the cops where he was. And she's a despicable human being, just like her son. So what are the lessons that we can learn from this case? So there was a rally for Roseanne after she was murdered. And there were hundreds and hundreds of people there. And they had on purple. And I'm asking myself, what does that do? After the person is dead, what does hundreds of people gathering together do? That does nothing. 
We need people to gather together while the victim is alive. If the victim had gotten support from all those hundreds of people at her funeral, she probably would have been alive today because then she would have been able to afford to get away from Bobby so that he wouldn't be able to kill her. Did this victim make mistakes? Yes, of course she made mistakes. She should have never gotten with him. That's the first thing that we have to think about. How do we prevent cases like this from happening? And the first thing is prevention. That's the first thing. The first thing is not the cops. The first thing is prevention. Before the cops could even be involved, you should be looking up the history of the man you intend to get into a romantic relationship with. Some people you should not even touch with a 10 foot pole. Don't even think about being with them. I don't care what they look like because they're just evil. If Bobby was abusing women years before he even met Roseanne, that's just an indication that he was gonna to continue to abuse any woman he was gonna be with for the rest of his life. That's just in his mentality. That's just the kind of man he is. He's not gonna change. If a man thinks that calling a woman the B word and uh, looking down on her or hitting her, if he thinks that's okay, he's not gonna stop doing that. That's already in his mind. That's not going away. What you need to do, you need to get away from someone like that. You need to avoid being around someone like that. Because once you get with somebody like that, it's gonna be a hard road to get away from him. And when somebody is determined to kill you, there's nothing anybody can do to save you. Because posting on social media is only gonna antagonize him. Going to the cops, is gonna antagonize him. Getting a restraining order is gonna antagonize him. You need to have a plan to get away from him where he can't physically find you. That's the only way Roseanne could have gotten away from Bobby. But I don't think Roseanne had the means to do that, not by herself. She needed a village to help her. All those people that was at the funeral and was at the rally, that's who she needed when she was alive. Releasing a hundred balloons into the air, that does nothing. How's that gonna bring her back? What is that doing? We need to help people when they're alive. That's it for this case. I'll see you guys in the next one.